watching online this morning, you are welcome as well. And if you're watching through the week, we're glad that you have tuned in to join us in our praise, remembering that we have rejoiced at Christmas arrival. The candles have been lit, counting us towards Christmas through the season of Advent. Even the Christmas candle in the middle, that gold candle has been lit. All is as it should be. We remember our Lord is like us in flesh and blood. That he is also our risen Saviour. So we continue to have reason to rejoice as do all those around the globe who worship this day and every day. So at this cusp of the, the years changing, we sing that great psalm, All people that on earth do dwell.
knowing that we hold precious the stories of that child Jesus who grew to be the rabbi who surprised with wisdom struck men and women with awe as they saw the miracles performed and though they didn't understand it saw you approach Jerusalem and leave it carrying your cross all of this brings glory to you Father for working out your age old plan we are so limited by comparison working year by year and wondering indeed where the days have gone you have seen all things and you know what is ahead of us and all whom we love father bless us today and in all the days coming of 2024 amen friends this morning a short reading from galatians chapter 4 just those four verses that can be found on page 1170 galatians 4 on page 1170 and we begin reading at verse 4 1170 Galatians chapter 4 from verse 4 Paul writes but when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption. Because you are his children, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. And speaking of the children of God, Esther, welcome this morning. We're glad to be here, Esther. Katie, is Willie coming in just now as well? Right. Let's not pretend we should start without Willie. He'd be very disappointed if we did. So we'll keep our, our next hymn. We'll keep it warm for a moment. You can put his fingers back in his pockets just to keep them ready to play for us.
What time is it? 11.14. What time is it? A good time to pray. Any time is. Any situation. Any moment the Spirit turns us towards high heaven is a good time to pray. But a week or two ago, I spoke to you introducing the idea of us preparing for a season of prayer together. That we would pray at one particular time if we are able and pray for ourselves, for our church and for each other. Already this morning I have offered a prayer of thanks that there are so many of us here on this last day of the year. After all the fuss and uh, glory of the Christmas season, this week between Christmas and New Year is often the poorest attended. All I can say today is, wow, I am a lucky minister to have as many as are here. But then, I've always been a lucky minister, uh, looking out on a congregation that is faithful in worship and in working. For all I, the wheezies I've had are all the things that we decide to do together. But this is a very particular uh, encouragement to pray starting in January. Now you can start tomorrow, but I'm only going to blow the whistle to begin next Sunday. But get your, get your habit and your resolution in place before that. What I'm going to encourage is that we start uh, praying at 12 noon each day. Now, somebody has already asked me, if I'm working at that time, then pick a time that works for you. If you have duties and responsibilities that would make it difficult, then choose a time that does work for you. For my part, I'm going to set my alarm to uh, just give me a few buddies at 12 noon each day, and I'm going to say the one prayer that I would hope we all would, which is the Lord's Prayer. Just start with our Father and pray that. But pray asking that God would give you the ideas to pray for, the people to pray for in your moments that you spend with God. And it doesn't need to be long. It just needs to be a moment when you focus on believing that others are praying for you, for your church, and for themselves. It's as simple as that. It might only take you a minute if you're in the middle of being busy or give you reason to stop and pray. The Lord's Prayer and anything else that you and the Lord's Spirit encourage you to offer Him in prayer. Really, keep it simple. Don't feel guilty if you're caught up in duties or work or just miss it one day or something. I'm not going to take a, a repentance stool and sit it below the church and have anyone sit on it. It's an encouragement as it was with Luke's gospel earlier uh, in this year and we start 24 with the practice of let's pray together and the encouragement is to do that at the same time if that works for you. A simple and as simple as can be. So keep that in mind, and you can start your praying tomorrow. I'm going to put a repeat alarm on my phone, as I said, and I'll say more about it next Sunday, uh, when I hope that more of our regulars, even more of our regulars, are present to take the encouragement. And some of you might have been a practice by then. Now just before I turn the Bible over, let me say a big thank you too to anyone who helped out on Friday at the food pantry. You were magnificent in the time that you put in Friday there and the Friday before. Fabulous. We have fed so many people and you have put in hours of effort. I do appreciate it. I know Trisha is very grateful and so are many who carried away more bags with more in them than they could have believed they were going to be given on both those Fridays. So thanks again. Let's turn to our Bible and our Gospel, page 1024.
28. And we're reading from Luke chapter 2 at verse 25. Page 1028. Do you know what 1028 looks like? It's a pretty big number. I know you can read the Bible without any problem with ale. Well, I've got 1028 for you. Uh, John, thank you, good man. John, do you want mine? Or are you just going to look up that one? Right, John. Verse 25. A key. We are proud of them as well. They will try to look up their Bibles. Verse 25, Mario, where it begins, Now there was a man in Jerusalem. Did you see a wee tiny 25 beside it? Jerry, not the time for the microphone. Can I have it, Jerry? I, I could use that. <laughs> if anybody else's voice sounding big in church. Never do. So I'm going to read, and it's from that passage, and it tells us about the day there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child of Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised him, God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your own soul too. Amen. Now the time is running fast when we will leave the carols until much later in next year. But let's sing, Love Came Down at Christmas. Too small, 
on this side is a battery. You wouldn't let this happen to your phone. Don't let this happen to you either. Well, in its own way, why is it enough words? Don't run on empty. That's why there are ministers up and down the country crawling into their pulpits this morning, worn out from the efforts they have made in December. It gets easier the longer you're in the job. So let me say, I stood up tall and skipped up the steps, glad to see you all. Nonetheless, there are days when it just begins to feel like you've got nothing left and you have to sink into a, a settee or just hide back behind the door from all the world. But it's nearly New Year. So let me ask you to finish this sentence. If every day was New Year's Day, you'd eat a lot of steak pie. Right? <laughs> no, not that one. Well, what would it be this in your own imagination? I don't need answers out loud. If every day was New Year's Day. I wouldn't need to get up too early. <laughs> <laughs>
One last one that I should have reached out. Now I've chosen four things which potentially, if you are one of my warriors and going to give yourself trouble, you could make this all about the guilt you will carry. But it's actually my intention to ask you, this is the last day of 23. What are you going to constructively do from the start of next year to not be left with that sense of if only? Because that's its own baggage. And we know because we are finite people, our God is infinite. We are stuck in the cycle of 24 hours. What will we do different? That new day, new beginning thinking, with less baggage, fresh resolve and more growth. Let's go back to the story for a few minutes so I hope you see something in it that will help you with that which is on the board. Simeon was a man in Jerusalem, righteous and devout, and the Spirit of God had told him, you will not die until you see the Messiah. Wow! He had been told that in his lifetime, he would see the Messiah arrive. Do you think that he needed much moving by the Spirit, in verse 27, to go to the temple courts? Do you think he gave himself the weekend off? Decided that he had done enough? Or do you think that because he knew God had made a promise, that was a reason for him to hurry to the temple for his prayers, his worship, knowing that there was coming a day when he would see the Messiah? Imagine the regret that Simeon would feel if he had decided to lie in bed that day. If he had decided it was somebody else's turn to do the work of praising God. If he had done enough and surely that's all that mattered. Simeon went to the courts with expectation because today could be the day Today could be the day when his own eyes would see what people had been waiting for for hundreds of years. In the same way that today could be the day when you let God take from you the guilt of past mistakes, the guilt of things undone, the guilt of things done. He can take it. Let it go. And just do what God is asking. Which is, see that the Messiah is present in your life. Simeon had to wait, we don't know how long, to see Jesus just that once, for all we know. But we get to see Jesus in our lives, time after time. And we get, with a new day, a new year coming, the chance for fresh resolve that we are going to be whom we should be. And the difference between us and just making a resolution is that God is with us. And when God comes, so does his power. So my commitment this year, last year, read the, read the whole Bible. This year, I'm only going to read the New Testament. Going to, I'm going to work on finding a way to reflect 
from that much shorter read so that I'm listening for God speaking through the verses that I read. If I read only one chapter a day, it would be my mother's birthday when I finished Revelation. September the 16th this year, because it's a leap year. One chapter a day, that's all it will take me. And I will simply be looking for God speaking to me through that week. That's what I'm determined to do. There are other things in my mind. When I look back at 23 and think, I don't want those worries in my head filling it. We can deal with them. It's just a case of working with somebody who loves me, knows me, and doesn't want our own worries and we'll work together. Because that's what we have as an option. If you can work with somebody you love, you can work with God whom you love. So that you can be his child. And God will bless you in the everyday of the 366 days of this coming year with opportunities to be his man or woman, to be his child, adopted because of your faithfulness, not into slavery, but into being family to the living God. And that brings its own new day, new beginning. Because if you can change some of the things that you want to leave behind and take up some things which will be good for you and believe that God who is as new as the day's dawn will work with you, then you'll begin to grow, sure, as a human being. And why not? That's a good thing in itself. But you will also begin to grow in faith. Thus we are reminded that when Simeon saw the Messiah, he didn't say, At last! I've been in this temple so many times. It's over. I can go home now. That wasn't a sense. That would have that been carrying the weight of expectation instead of the, the joy of waiting for that moment. Instead, Simeon blesses God that God kept his promise. Simeon thanks God that his plans are prepared. There is light for the whole world of which you and I are a part, to the glory of the God of Israel. Our God demonstrates the ability to do new things, to be someone new, and to do new things with joy, without guilt, without baggage. Find in Him a year to do the same thing. Pray more, read more, for the love of meeting your God in those moments. And I'll never ask you how many pieces of Christmas cake you ate in January. And we'll just keep that secret between ourselves. But the rest, our talk of God, well, we might share that for the glory of Him who has blessed us and saved us because Jesus was born for us. Well, we have some young ones in our midst and we've got a prayer prepared, a, a, a hymn prepared just for them. Two young boys in the back who I don't know very well yet, met them last week, uh, but we're delighted to have them as well. So we're going to sing to the tune of Jingle Bells, a song called Many years ago. Now, some of you are wondering, is there such a hymn that goes with it? There is these days. It's been written for it. And some of you have sung it before, and some of you won't have, but you, you know the tune perfectly well. 
So girls, if you can read those words on the screen, sing them with us. But we are going to sing to a tune of Jingle Bells that you know it as well. Yes. And we've been learning this last wee while. So will we stand up to sing together? Let's do that. Quiet time. 
Concentrate if I would, not be good. Well, uh, and Jamie, did you have a nice Christmas? Did you enjoy it? It's family time. Okay, you tell me what she got. I got a dolly. Did you get lots of things to make pictures with? No. No? <laughs> right, it looks, it sounds like Kevin Dale did. What did you get, Jamie? What were you going to tell me about? Pizza Play-Doh! Yes! Fantastic! <laughs> Play-Doh is so much fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. My girl used to play with Play-Doh, mm. making all <laughs> sorts of things that I had to pretend to eat. <laughs> I can't remember if it was pizza or not, but she loved playing with it. We're glad that you've had a lovely Christmas, and it's really nice to see you this morning. If I can, I'm going to pray before we close our time together in church. So, I'm going to go back up into the pulpit. And invite us to come together before our God. Almighty and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy that Christmas brought us. For those of us with family and friends and routines that we can enjoy. Thank you, Lord, for all that Christmas brought us. And thank you from all of us for the joy it brings in knowing that Jesus is with us. To enable us to meet each day, feeling like we have the opportunity to be made again as family of the Lord Jesus. May we know how to walk with him each day, believing that he will enable us, empower us, and guide us how we can grow to become more like him. We pray that in the coming year our church will continue to reach out to our neighbours, to show that faith pushes us from our holy huddle to become more and more welcoming and hospitable to those who seek to benefit from the work we do, the groups that run from our halls and church, and all that we do to serve those who need our assistance. Father, may young and old meet you here. May each adult discover your calling on their life, a way to use their skills and gifts. May we believe that you are calling us all into purpose and meaning. And we pray, Lord, for our town and its churches, for the many changes coming to climb back. Here we would ask your blessing on all who will lead us towards the union with the Talker Trinity. May we know how to be stronger together, to be clear that you are ready to bless us in our co-working and are reaching out to a new, much bigger parish. But we pray for every parish in Scotland where there is adjustment to face this coming year. May you lead your people in the curve towards greater service to this generation. So hear us as we complete our prayers, saying together the words that you gave us, Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our closing hymn this morning is God is working. 
is Carpus Island. Amen.